So let's look at that. So here's the lab sim. So first they have a printer class. So when you make a new printer, you give it how many pages per minute it can print as a parameter. It has a instance variable which keeps track of its state, which is, is it currently doing a new task? What is the task? So this will be pointing to the task when it's busy. And this will be the time remaining for print that task. So this will be a countdown from however long it's going to take. It'll be counting down every second. So tick gets called to simulate time. So in the main loop, it's going to ask the printer to simulate one second. So it's going to call this method. It's going to say uh, if I'm if I'm if the current task is not equal to none, meaning I'm printing something, it's going to set the time remaining to time remaining minus one. So it's going to subtract one second from the time it takes to do that printing for that current task. Uh, if it uh, reaches zero, it's going to set current task to zero or to none, meaning it's done. And if uh, this busy is just a uh, return a boolean. So if there is a current task and it's not none, it's going to say, yes, I am printing. And you'll notice that when it was done printing, it set current task to none. So if, if the current task is none, it's going to return false. So that simulates the printer. It's an object that will give you that uh, information. Oh, and then there's one to start a task. So you give it a new task. It sets the new task in the current task. And then it calculates based on the number of pages for that task and how fast this printer prints, it's going to set the time remaining to do the printing. And then there's task. So task is actually uh, the object that represents a task. So when it starts, it, you give it a time, which is the current timestamp. Uh, and then it creates the number of pages from a random range from 1 to 21 pages. So that's part of the simulation that you could change that number if you expect uh, print jobs to be larger than that. Maybe students average bigger than that. So you would actually change how this works. Uh, get stamp returns the timestamp. Uh, get pages returns the pages. So those are just accessor methods that return the instance variables. Uh, wait time. Uh, you pass it the current time and it takes the current time minus the timestamp to figure out the wait time. And now here's the functions that run everything. So there's a simulation function. And then down at the bottom here, we have a loop for range 1 to 10, run the simulation. So it's going to, this is how many total simulations it's going to do. So it's actually going to do more than one simulation. It's going to do 10 of them. And each simulation is going to run for this long. And I think that represents the number of printers. Let's go back up here. Oh, that's pages per minute. So each printer is going to be simulating these many pages per minute. And this is how long the simulation will run. So it starts by creating a, 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 a queue. Well, it actually creates a printer called the lab printer. Uh, it creates a queue called the print queue. And it creates an array of waiting times, which is the how, how many, uh, the how much time each task took. Then this is the big loop for the simulation for the current second in the range of how long it's going to run the simulation. If new print task, uh, then it's going to create a new task and enqueue it in the print queue. So let's see where is new print task. So I'm going to find it here. Here's new print task. So new print task sets a number from 1 to 181. If the number is equal to 180, it returns true. So this is testing when I should create a print task. So out of uh, 180 seconds, it's going to create a task uh, once every 180 seconds. That's how that works. So I'm in a particular second. I have a 1 in 180 chance it's going to actually create a print task. Uh, so that's how that works. So if you have students doing starting a print task more often than that, uh, you can adjust the numbers here.
So if they printed it, if they created a task, we have a new task in the queue. Uh, next, it checks if uh, if there is a if the lab printer is busy, not busy, and the print queue is not empty, then they're going to assign it to that printer. So they're going to dequeue the print task and store it in next task. They're going to append the waiting times, uh, the current second. So they get next task, the wait time for that task and they pin that to waiting times and then they start that printer so that's going to start the task on that printer and then next they're going to tick the lab printer through one second so it's going to do all its work and finally they get the uh, the average weight equal to the sum of the wait time so this is when the simulation is all done they get the average weight as the sum of all the wait times uh, divided by the length of how many wait times there were and then they print out a statement. So a lot there. So when we run it, we'll see uh, five simulations. So if we, uh, let's see, I think I can. So if we run it, you'll see at the bottom here it's printed out the the average wait time. And in a couple of cases there was a task waiting when it finished simulation that it hadn't finished printing a task. So it also tells you that. So of course you can look at that and you can see here's the maximum would be it had to wait 300 seconds. Uh, so depending on if that's too long for a student to wait, you could add, you could try modifying the simulation to do two printers. So it, if the first printer is busy up here, it would uh, check another printer and see if it could add it to the, its uh, printing. Um, so that's uh, you can also play with how busy the students. They only average 180 seconds for every time they issue a job, and how many pages they print. So you can also mess with that. So this has a lot of qualities that you see in any si in any simulation this okay let's go back